New Year. Uh, the, what is it in Japanese? Is it Ake Mashte Omerito Gozaimas? It's been a while since I've said that. <laughs> yes, it's Ake Mashte Omerito Gozaimas. Oh, Lord. You fucking. That's hilarious. That's fucking hilarious. Glorious. Hold on a sec. So we're. How are we coming in? Uh, should be better now. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, Maybe. that's better now. See, so we're kind of stalling here. <laughs> Rejoice, everyone. We're back. <laughs> We're not stalling. I just need next time to maybe ready a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> so uh, we'll be covering a lot here with Tomo no Mai. Uh, I'm just going to tell you right now, spoilers for um, anything Fate that's come out since the original Fate Stay Night, pretty much. Pretty much anything extra. Tomo's role in FGO, as well as the... Uh, um, the events of an unreleased chapter in NA right now called the Tunguska Sanctuary. Because Tom Omo's a character in that, apparently. Kind of. We'll get there. <laughs> oh, so I guess that's my cue. Yeah, why um, don't you uh, 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 talk us into Tom Omo here? Talk us into and out of Tom Omo at this point. All yeah, right. we, have a, we have a lot more in Tom Omo to go over here to start, too. We've got a god-awful amount to go over. So, Tom Omo no Mai, Lady Duckweed. Uh, Tamamo no Mai is a character in Japanese history and mythology. Um, she is from the... A lot of writings about her are from the Muromachi period, uh, the Ashikaga shogunate from about 1336 to 1573, although all of her stories are set before that canonically, um, which, you know, I mean, you, you write stories about what happened before you. Uh, most of the stories about her are narrative literature written... Um, Honestly, a lot of it in the Edo period. Um, what we know historically, she was a courtesan under Emperor Konoe, who reigned from 1142 to 1155. Um, and in a lot of versions, she's a legendary fox spirit. Um, you know, who appears in Otogi Zoshi uh, works. Um, but she's also described by Toriyama Sekien in the third volume uh, Konjaku Hyaki Shui, which is a four-volume set of supernatural bestiaries based on literature, folklore, and art of Japan, um, which was an interesting thing to find. Also, um, some of her story is told in the Heike uh, Monogatari, um, which I have here, but that's not not the majority of it. Um, so, in the in the Edo period, a lot of literature written about her would conflate it with similar foreign fox spirit stories of, like, corruption and stuff like that. Uh, most uh, namely, Hokusai's version from the Edo period, which is going to be the one that we're going to talk about the most, because it's the most fleshed out, and it's where a lot of her character comes from in a lot of the stories. Like, people build around this framework. So, according to his story, she was born 3,500 years ago in China. Um, and she eventually became a powerful sorceress. After 700, several hundred years, she became a white, pale-faced, golden-furred kitsune, or nine-tailed fox, um, and an expert in manipulation. And she would proceed to use her beauty, charm, and wit to enhance her standing and influence in world affairs um, and try to seize power. Um, so with the Hokusai timeline of, of Tamamo no Mai, right, we start with Shang Dynasty China. Uh, traditionally, second millennium BC. This is the myth, semi-mythical dynasty that succeeds the Sha, but precedes the Zhou, which is the first like fully established um, archaeological dynasty. Like we have archaeological evidence for the Shang dynasty, but there's very little of it, and we don't know much about it, right? So traditionally, the dates are traditionally the dates were ascribed from about 1766 to 1122 BCE, but current scholarship says about 1556 to 1046, and a lot of that is based on the Shashangzhou chronology project and carbon-14 dating at the Erlegang site. Um, so we start with Daji. Um, and that was who she first was in China in Hokusai's story. She was a beautiful woman um, and a favorite consort of King Zhou of the Shang Dynasty, also known as Di Xin or Zhou Jin. Um, he's also the last king 
of the Western Zhou Dynasty, which is well, the, well, the last king of this, of the of the Shang Dynasty. Sorry, we're gonna get to the last king about the Western Zhou later. We're we're gonna cover that too. <laughs> this is separate. Um, so she was a model of depravity. She held orgies in the palace. Uh, she liked to watch and invent new types of horrible tortures. And it's said that she brought the fall of the Shang Dynasty and escaped execution, fleeing to India in about 1046 BCE, which is congruent with the archaeological dates we have for when the Shang Dynasty fell. All right. So moving on, she moves to the Magadha Kingdom in India, which is one of 16 Mahajapadas, uh, or great kingdoms of the second urbanization period. Uh, most likely her time in India is set before the second urbanization since the char a lot of the characters are related to mythological characters we already met in the Ramayana when we talked about Rama and Sita and her story may have inspired something in the Mahabharata. I'm going to discuss that in a second. Um, so here she was Lady Kayo, a consort of King uh, Kamal Shapada. Uh, also known as Hanzoku in Japanese history. Um, and she used her beauty and charm to corrupt and dominate the king, um, making him devour children, kill priests, and do a lot of terrible fucked up shit. Um, Kamal Shapada actually ends up being known in Indian mythology because of his evil deeds as a Rakshasa, um, like, a, like an actual form of demon. Um, he's also a king of the Solar Dynasty, which is one of the two major dynasties. The same one that uh, the Buddha is descended from, and the same one that Rama is descended from in the Ramayana. Um, so, he, uh, he's also said to be under a curse um, that had that may have been the narrative influence for the curse that's under that uh, is on Pandu in the Mahabharata that we talked about with the Pandavas, where he couldn't uh, conceive a son without dying. He did, like divine children that's why they were all demigods um and so you know what what hokusai says is either kayo and kamal shapada ran out of children to eat or he turned to buddhism and she had to flee back to china like the rat that she is <laughs> so we're back in china uh, we're back in China for the Zhou Dynasty, more specifically the Western Zhou, which existed from about 1046 to 771, although the Eastern Zhou Dynasty would stay until about 256 BCE. This section of story is set in the 770s when the, when the Western Zhou fell. So Baoshi um, seduced King Yu and became uh, the queen, and she was known as one of the most... Is it King Yu or King Yo? Because I think it's funny to say King Yo of Zhou. You know what? Pronunciations. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna swear that I'm pronouncing these right. That's <laughs> spelled you. <laughs> I'm. I'm not gonna. I already fucked up some of the Indian names, so I'm not gonna p pretend. But King Yo of Zhou. Okay, King Yo of Zhou. It could be Zhao and you. Anyways, um, so she's known as one of the most beautiful women ever, um, and she manipulated the king by rarely ever smiling so that when she, so that he would do increasingly wild things to get her to smile um, to the point of or at one point he was literally he would activate the beacon it's kind of like the beacons of Gondor right he would activate these beacons that would like summon all his nobles to court saying that like they were being invaded and then he and then she would like laugh at them um, and he did that a few times and then they got real mad about that um, and so they killed him, yeah. um, ending the Western Zhou dynasty, upon which she escaped again. Returned to Japan. Woo. Well, our first trip to Japan, technically. Yeah. So um, she resurfaced. Bon bon, <laughs> so she resurfaced in the 700s, right? About, you know, 70 years later as a young girl named Wakamo and convinced the leaders of the 10th Envoy to, um, uh, the, the 10th Envoy, um, what the fuck? 10th Envoy to China. I forgot to write China, apparently. I wrote the rest of that sentence. For, so she convinced the leaders of the, the 10th Envoy to China, um, Kibi no Makibi Abe no Nakamaru, which is significant. We're going to say it. We're going to mention that name again. Um, and uh, Ganjin to take her to Japan, where she would hide for about 300 years under the radar, you know? 
Um, so in the 1090s, she'd resurface again, turning herself into a human baby on the side of the road, where a married pe- couple would pick her up and name her Mikazume. Um... So they raised her and she was incredibly beautiful and smart. At age seven, she recited poetry for the emperor who was impressed and employed her as part of his court. She excelled in learning here, music, history, astronomy, religion, Chinese classics. She was always clean and really nice smelling. For some reason, that was mentioned several times in the myths. They really emphasized the clean and nice smelling. She must have smelled real nice. She must have smelled real nice. Um, And she once again had the most beautiful face in Japan. Um, So not like me. Don't... Anyways. On her 18th birthday, uh, a poetry and instrumental recital was held in her honor and a storm fell upon the palace, snuffing out all the lights, and a bright light emanated from her body. And everyone who saw it was like, oh, you must have been so, so good and holy in your last life. You're divine, practically. <laughs> um, and she was renamed Tamamo no Mai at that time by Emperor Toba, who lived from 1103 to 1156, but reigned from 1107 to 1123, and became his consort. Um, so, Tamamo no Mai! <laughs> I can't just speed ran through that first page. <laughs> This is only going to get more detailed now. All right, second page, let's go. <laughs> We're on the second page. You don't understand. There. We're finally ready to start tone of my proper. <laughs> yeah. So, immediately after she was named consort, uh, Emperor Toba fell ill. Um, so, Abe no Yasunari was brought in. He was an onmyoji um, when physicians couldn't do anything to help the king. So, I went looking this up from several different sources, and... There are one or two sources that say it was Abe no Seime, but the timeline does not line up there. Like, the, the, the time periods are not concurrent. Some people say it may have been Abe no Yasuchika. Um, technically, both Abe no Yasuchika and Abe no Yasunari are descendants of Abe no Seime, who lived earlier. Um, but all three of them are descendants of Abe no Nakamaru, one of the guys who brought her back to Japan from China. Isn't that funny how that works? Man, he really shouldn't have let that girl on that ship. Um, So he discovers that she's a kitsune, but the emperor doesn't agree with him and asks for her to be tested. So he prepares a spell called the Taizan Fuku no Sai, um, with Tamamo performing a key part of the ritual. Um, So theoretically, that's because an evil spirit would not be able to perform the ritual. So she dresses beautifully, waves the staff in the ritual, and disappears before it's completed. Surprise, surprise. Um, so soon, um, and then at that point, soon word came of women and children disappearing near Nasuno in the Shimotsuke province in Japan, and the emperor summoned his best warriors to go and kill her. Uh, Miranosuke and Kazusanosuke. Kazusanosuke? Kazusanosuke. Um, and so the two of them and 80,000 men went to kill her. Because you can never have enough people. Um, she outsmarted them for several months, repeatedly leading them on goose chases. They were very, very annoyed. They did not like this. Um, until Miranosuke had a dream. Um, and a li- this beautiful young girl came to him in this dream and was like, don't, uh, don't kill me. And, and he refused to answer her. And then he woke up. Um, and so the next day they managed to corner her and he shot her through the flank and neck and then, uh, Kazusanosuke, um, struck her with his blade, killing her. Um, so it's said that her fallen body became or was sealed into the Seshaseki or the death stone, which was said to kill any who touched it. Um, later a priest named Geno would encounter a Buddhist priest named Geno. Um, we'll mention him later. Uh, would encounter it and perform some exorcisms on it, causing her spirit to swear that she would never actively haunt the stone again. Uh, Fun fact, on March 5th, 2022, the stone broke in half. Uh Uh-oh. All right. Moving on to the post-death period. (laughs) Oh, hang on. I do want to clarify something. So we're going to talk about this, uh, I think, a tiny bit more later. But, but, but. So what's what's interesting here is... Actually, no. No, I should wait. I'll wait. Um, So, post-death. A year after she died, Emperor Konoe, um, who was a figurehead, 
Um, the actual emperor uh, was ruling as a cloistered emperor and had been for the reigns of three other emperors. Cloistered emperor just means he was like the power from behind the throne, but was technically retired. You know. Um, so he died without an heir. Um, and then a year later, her lover, Emperor Toba, died. And he was the one who had been ruling as cloistered emperor, controlling everything from behind the scenes. This created a massive succession crisis um, in which uh, Sutoku, uh, Emperor Sutoku, would be backed by the Fujiwara. And Go Shirakawa would be backed by the Minamoto and the Taira. Um, and this would eventually end up in the Genpei War. Um, the end of the Heian... Uh, period and the rise of the shoguns with the establishment of the Kamakura period. To be continued. To be continued. Uh, okay. People, events, and concepts given to me by Knickknack in connection to this character. Page three. Uh. <laughs> so, first of all, Kitsune. We're going to do basic coverage of Kitsune. So, they are fox spirits of Japanese mythology, but they are present in most East Asian cultures. They are shapeshifters and often tricksters. The more tails, up to nine, the older and wiser a kitsune is, the more powerful they are. There are two types. Zenko, which are benevolent, celestial, and associated with the goddess Inari, and the Yako, or Nogitsune, who are mischievous and malicious. Is that everything you needed to cover about kitsune? Yep. Cool. All right, we're moving on to Amaterasu. Omikami. <laughs> So, Amaterasu is the Japanese goddess of the sun, ruler of heaven, called Takamagahara, um, and ancestress of the Imperial House of Japan, one of the three precious children, along with Sukuyomi, the moon god, and Susano, the storm god of the creator Izanami. Izanagi and Izanami. Man, woman, whatever. <laughs> um, I also want to be very clear here that I did have some source material to read for this, but if I'm getting it wrong, it's because of the translation for whatever I was reading. Um... The Gikeki, which I was reading for, for a couple of the upcoming episodes in this one, literally has only been translated into English once by Stanford in 1966. So it could be flawed. Yeah, there was a lot of online research to double check on some of the stuff I found. So according to the Kojiki, which is the Japanese chronicle, uh, she was born from the left eye of Izanagi when he washed in the river after visiting Yomi, the underworld. Um... But according to the Nihon Shoki, uh, it has the children being born from Izanagi and Izanami after they create the Japanese archipelago. So, feuding myths, obviously. Like, different areas, different kind of creation stories. This happens in a lot of places where one religion is widespread across many different population centers. So, um, also there's a story that from a bronze mirror in Izanagi's left hand beget the sun... Or, you know, just from washing post Yomi, but this story is found uh, differently and involves Susano U and Ogetsuhime. So, Amaterasu and Tsukiyomi. Um, <laughs> you're looking at me funny. So, um, Amaterasu, so these are some of the, like, the big myths involving Amaterasu, right? And, like, her yep. power and what she does. So, um, so she orders Tsukuyomi to go to the terrestrial world, also known as Ashihara no Nakatsukuni, to visit the goddess Ukemochi. So Ukemochi vomits food and presents it to him as a banquet, but he was offended and killed her. Amaterasu was very mad at this, this separated night from day. She then sent Ame no Kumahito, who found food, crops, and animals coming from Ukemochi's corpse. And she commanded that the plants be sown and the silk be reeled from the silkworms, creating agriculture and sericulture in Japanese. Um, mythology. So then there's a myth about Amaterasu and Susanoo. So Susanoo was the youngest and he was spoiled by Izanagi um, for his wild nature and he was constantly pining for his missing mother. So he went, he was, so Izanagi was like, get the fuck out. I can't deal with you anymore. So he went to Takamagahara to say goodbye to Amaterasu who came out to meet him dressed as a man. Um, and when this happened, he proposed a trial by pledge or ukehi to prove his sincerity. Um, when the two gods chewed and spat out an object from uh, each other, and five or six, depending on the telling gods, and three goddesses were born, Amaterasu claiming the males as her sons, and the three girls, also known as the Munkata goddesses, were given to Susano U as his daughters. Next page. So he claimed that he had won and he like raged in victory, destroying one of Amaterasu's rice fields and defecating in her palace. I promise you, if, if one of my siblings ever defecated in my house, they, they like in not a toilet, they would not be alive. Your sibling anymore in your house. 
all three. Um, so Amaterasu tolerated this with the grace of the goddess that she is. Uh, but one day he caused he caused a hole in the roof of her weaving hall by hurling in the Ame no Fuchikoma or the heavenly piebald through it that he had flayed. It's a horse. He flayed a horse and threw it through the ceiling of her. Once again, if one of my siblings did this, they would no longer be alive, my sibling, or in my house. <laughs> so one of the maidens was so startled that she struck herself and died, which enraged Amaterasu. And so Amaterasu shut herself inside the Ameno uh, Iwayatu um, cave, plunging heaven and earth into total darkness. So and now we're on to the heavenly rock cave part of the story, which is an important part of this story. <laughs> um, so the gods led by... Omikane, the god of wisdom, hatched a plan to lure her out. They set up beads, cloth, and a mirror outside of the cave, and then they all started laughing and made merry like they were having a party. And she was surprised that the gods would celebrate in her absence. And so she questioned them, and Ame no Uzumi said it was because a greater and more beautiful goddess than her had appeared. So out of curiosity, she emerged and saw her own reflection in the mirror, the Yata no Kagami, important, we're going to mention that later, um, and the cave was sealed behind her and light returned to the world. As a punishment, Susano is dri driven out of Takamagahara. Um, he arrives in Izumo on Earth and kills the Yamata no Orochi and rescues uh, Kushinada Hime, uh, where he marries her, and then finds in the carcass of uh, finds in the carcass of the Yamata no Orochi the Ame no uh, Murakumo no Tsuruge, uh, the Sword of the Gathering Clouds of Heaven, uh, also known in Japanese history as the Kusanagi no Tsurugi. Important, we're going to mention this again, grass cutting sword, which he then presents to Amaterasu as a reconciliatory gift. Uh, now we move on to the subjugation. <laughs> so the subjugation of Ashihara no Nakatsukuni. So that's that's the Earth, the terrestrial world. So um, she and the primordial deity Taka, Takami Musubi said that um, Ashihara no Nakatsukuni, uh, which was then ruled by Okuni Nushi, who was a descendant of the son of uh, Susano, should be pacified and under the jurisdiction of their progeny. So she orders... Ame no Oshihomimi, uh, which is the firstborn of the males from that contest we mentioned a while ago to rule. But he goes down there and he's like, I refuse, they're barbarians. So she sends Ame no Hohi, uh, who curried favor with Okino Nushi and didn't report back for a long time. So she then sends Ame no Wakahiko, who married Okunimushi's daughter, uh, Shita Teruhime, and then eight years later kills a messenger of hers that she sends to him. Um, and then hurls it back up to heaven, right? And then she hurls it back down, hits him in the... and, and kills him in his sleep. <laughs> it's her son. <laughs> she, you fucking yeet that bird back at him. Um, so then, then she sends Futsunushi and Takemi Kazuchi, who finally succeed, and uh, Okuni Nushi goes to govern the spirit world. She then tries to send Ame no... Oshihomimi back down again and he suggests his son Ninigi um, so she gives Ninigi three heirlooms right the Yata no Kagami mirror the Yasakani no Magataha jewel piece and the Kusanagi no Tsurugi sword and he becomes the ancestor of the emperors of Japan five gods also accompany him becoming ancestors of clans involved in court ceremonies in Japan um, then, then you know notable uh, is then uh, Emperor Jimimu and the Yatagarasu, uh, Ninigi's great-grandson, uh, went looking for a new home and basically uh, ran into a bunch of trouble along the way. And so Abaturasu ends up sending him like a crow to help him out and a sword. A different sword from the Kusurugi no, uh, the other, other sword, the grass-cutting sword. Okay. Uh, the only thing I have on Susano is younger brother of Amaterasu and often multifaceted and wild and impetuous because I was told I didn't need to deep d to dive that deeply into him. Yes, he uh, just a footnote here. He exists in Tight Moon, but has only been mentioned so far. Mm -hmm. Which means the only thing I have left to discuss is the K Tunguska event. We're gonna hold on to that for a bit. Okay, I'm not gonna discuss the Tunguska event yet. We'll come back to that. I think the viewers are now 25 minutes into the video and we haven't seen one thing fake. Fam, fam, I speed ran that. Yeah. I went as fast as I, I know could. you did. <laughs> but I got all the pertinent information. So we're actually going to start here with Amaterasu because okay. we have a bit of a narrative here. Oh, okay. You, oh, so you're going to tell me a story like I told you a story. 
Oh, well, here's Tomo's design, by the way. Oh. And here's Amaterasu. Ooh. <laughs> Let's just pull Mommy, that up full I'm screen. I'm sorry. Mommy, I'm sorry. Mommy? Me likey. And big fan. This is... So I'm all for this. Let me be clear here. Amaterasu in Fate Without Mincing Any of My Words uh -huh. is an evil bitch. That only makes her more attractive. Uh, <laughs> she appears as a nine-tailed fox, by the way. Hey! You can so, see her little tails in the background. So the kitsune was important not only to Tama Onomai, but yeah. also to Amaterasu. Omikami. And uh, remember I said she was an evil bitch? Yeah. She's so evil. She Remember I brought up the Beasts of Humanity with the Foo video? Oh, is she one of them? She qualifies as one of them. <gasps> she has not yet taken what? a seat as one of them. Oh. But she qualifies and expresses that she could be one of them. Hot. <laughs> I'm into this. <laughs> I can get down with this. Power-wise, it said she could beat about 100 heroic spirits and only the strongest, like, those top-tier servants be could Gil? actually <laughs> even have a chance of killing her. Gil might be one of the to those top ones. Damn. Let's go. I, I, uh... A chance, by the way. I can cite here that one of the strongest people in Titan Moon has either stated or indirectly uh, commented or has been commented mm -hmm. that they... They could fight, and they might be able to win. But that's kind of a, a, a throwing shit at the wall there. See what would happen. You don't know. It's really not known. It could go either way. Okay. Stop shaking the desk. So, let's flash back here to one of the more traumatic Seki reacts. Oh, no. Is this Julius Caesar? No. We don't have to come back to Julius Caesar till Cleopatra. Thank God. But, no, 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 no. Velber. Oh, a Tella. You remember when I said that Velber came down, caused some shit, killed a bunch of gods? Yeah. Amaterasu, power-wise, is stronger than Velber, but didn't have the tools to defeat Velber. And Velber kills Amaterasu. <sighs> so unfair. I'm rooting for Amaterasu. That said, she's only kind of dead. Okay. Amaterasu is strong enough to where she's... Her past self, pre-Velber, is omnipotent enough to be able to see past Velber. Okay. Like, all the way up into the modern day. Okay. And she has enough power to straight up summon people out of the modern day into herself. <laughs> she's her own holy grail. <laughs> so, basically, she might not be alive in the modern day, but that doesn't protect you. <laughs> that I is approve. one of those people by the way <laughs> I approve very good very good now I'll let you see the mess that is our tabs <laughs> that said she still died but when gods die they they leave a bit of themselves behind okay still is that Tamamonomai? Tamamonomai is a reincarnation okay. of uh Amaterasu. Okay. Rare. Rare. <laughs> You're so surprised. Like, rare. You were like, rare. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, dude. I'll go ahead and flip through these because she has a couple fun designs here. Oh. These are not fake Grand Order ones, so. Okay. Oh, that's my favorite so far. And you... We'll, we'll hold off on we'll the We'll get into here. the other one later. Okay. We'll first jump over here so you can see her oh, Grand Order yeah. artworks. This, I like this. This is pretty. This is horny, but this is pretty. Is that the Yata no Kagami? The mirror? Yeah. I believe so. Oh, okay. That's very horny. Oh! <laughs> it's so, she looks so energetic. She's just like, yes! I love it. You know what? This is about as horny as I expected. This one covers a fair bit. Yeah, that covers a lot. And you can see her tails and the mirror. And her tits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I agreed before I... Before you thought about before that. I comprehended what you said. <laughs> My brain was just like, yep. 
she's at least a reincarnation of one aspect of Amaterasu. Okay. Is um, it the fox spirit bit? More or less. She's still... So she still, like, pretty much watches over a lot of... And has a lot of Amaterasu's divinities. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is the part where she starts reincarnating into other... Or incarnating into other people throughout history that brings down dynasties in China. Mm-hmm. Daji and... and Baoshi. And Lady Kaio. Yeah. And she would go about that for a while. Yeah. Um... A long while. Actually, it was so much so that Daji, which is probably the one she spent the longest time in, yeah, um, was so strong and so she was so cruel as Daji, yeah, that she, as Daji, then qualified as a beast of like an evil of humanity, a beast. Well, and I didn't particularly cover it because I didn't want to get into the sheer amount of it, but Daji is the subject of countless plays and pieces of literature and 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 like chinese writings like she is an incredible even disconnected from tamamo no mai right disconnected from hokusai is telling where he conflates them together she is her own character in chinese um literature and mythology um that is very prevalent especially in um traditional theater actually there's one source that says that she not only could be a beast as Daji, she was a beast, and that source uh, was what defeated her. That said, that source also very well could be lying through his fucking teeth. Who is it? I forget his name, but he's... he. We'll, we'll get to him another Slimy time. Slimy little man. He claims he can be a grand servant with no proof of it. I haven't met any grand servants yet except for Lancer. Right? Yeah, I think it's just Romulus we've yeah, met Yeah, so Romulus Corineus. Hot. <laughs> I have to admit, I have to admit, right? It was just talking on a scale of like horniness, right? Because that, that's become my gimmick in a lot of these videos. Is Amaterasu, ten out of ten. Stomp me any day, mommy. Tamamo, I don't know. It's kind of just a horny anime girl. It's almost expected. Guess it's not doing it for me. Maybe if I see like a different version of her or like a different art, but like. The base form, it looks cool. Like, this is definitely my favorite of the three. Um, but not doing it for me. <laughs> the last comment I'll leave on Daji is, Tomo claims that Daji isn't even the same person. <laughs> this is bullshit, and another aspect of Tomo, like another version of Tomo, has called Tomo out on this lie and said that Tomo just isn't very happy about how she behaved back in those days. Well, I mean, if you're going to take great joy in watching and inventing new torture techniques, you should own that. <laughs> and holding palace-wide orgies. You would think, but apparently <laughs> she couldn't own that forever. <sighs> Kids these days. No sense of responsibility. Eventually she did go back to Japan. Mm-hmm. And... Yep, Wakamo. She, she became curious, because... In Japan, they're worshipping her as Amaterasu. Yeah. And she starts really digesting human culture there and created a fascination with how well humans are able to secure their own preservation. Valid. So she reincarnates again, this time as a Mikuzume. Yep. And at the age of 18, she goes and serves as a lady in, a lady in waiting for Emperor Toba. Mm-hmm. And... Then she's found out by Abe no Seme, who yep. I don't so know. So is, is it in fate? It's Abe no Seme. It is Abe no Seme. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, but historically, I think that's about three hundred years off officially. To I have Hokusai's to imagine timeline. that's the case in fate as yeah. well. And that would just mean that they're saying Abe no Seme is either very long lived or immortal. But at the same time, like I said, the uh, the other two ones, Abe no Yasunari and Abe no Yasuchika, are both direct descendants of Abe no Seme. Because this isn't the first time Abe no Seme has come up. Yeah, we, I remember we mentioned that name before because I was like, this feels familiar. Wrong. Yeah. Back then, we brought it up in Murasaki Shikibu as well in the Heian period. Oh, that was it. That was it. That was the one I Which remember. Which is after this as well. I think yeah. the implication here is that Abe no Seme is doing this thing where... Every single well, variation, no, is... like every single descendant, is just him. No, this is contemporary with the Heian period. 
Um, Sh- uh, Murasaki and um, Say would have been before this, as a matter of fact, I hmm. think. Because they're in the 10 hundreds. Sorry, no, you're right. It's the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, that was yeah. on it. But yeah, no, I th- I'm pretty sure what it's saying here is that Abe no Seme is just... All those descendants are just him, very long-lived. Which, fair. You do you, fate. It is funny, though, that he is a direct descendant of the dude who brought Wakuma back to Japan, though. I don't know if you knew that, but, like, no, I, I saw that and I was like, gold! <laughs> but yeah, she was found out in the 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 ceremony to figure out whether or not she's a kitsune, fox ears yep. sprouted from her head and wouldn't go away. <laughs> so uh, they chased her with the hounds into the fields of Nasu. Yeah, yep, that's, you know, we talked about Nasu. And uh, when the 80,000 men showed up to get her, she uh, begged for their forgiveness, and they did not forgive. Mira Nosuke said nope, and so, Kazusa Nosuke said nope. <laughs> the first wave, they all just fucking died. Yep. The second wave, she once again returned to trying to beg for their mercy. They also didn't give mercy, except this time she did not kill them. And she was killed in the field. Character pro- Oh, never mind. I was going to say character progression. No, she died. That's okay. Ultimately becoming the stone. Seishoseki. Yeah. Splitting in 2022. To be continued. I swear to fucking God, if fate doesn't capitalize on that and do, like, a modern-day version of Tamawa no Mai, like, post-COVID. Unfortunately, I don't hilarious. think they will, because lo- outside of a few servants, Altria being one of them, most of the time to be a servant, you have to be dead. Quite dead. I Well, technically she is dead. Not if she gets uh, released from the stone. No, she's dead. It's her spirit that's in, in the stone. Yeah. She's dead. She, I mean, her body is dead dead. <laughs> but yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's see here. Do I believe I have another note here. So this incarnation being the one that actually ends up being summonable. Okay. Um. What about... Oh, uh, no. Okay. Uh, so here's the thing, right? I was about to ask something about another version of her. Um, her and another version of her are already in the D&D campaign. Um, I had one of them at one point, but I traded them away. With um, Vorn and, and Realm. So I no longer have Tamamo, but we do have two versions of Tamamo in the campaign. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I had to respond to something there. So, because this is the. So, this incarnation is what's summonable because this is the incarnation of Tamamo that was actually human. Like, this is where she incarnated as a human and wasn't just a, a shape shifting fox spirit uh, misguiding men. Okay. Yeah. Um. And, but as a result of her being a lady-in-waiting, this version of her has a disposition to being a uh, a good wife. Like I said, she was incredibly well-educated yeah. in everything that a court lady should know, and she was the lover of Emperor Toba until... Yeah, in that final story, you'll notice yeah. there, she was quite well-behaved, comparatively. Okay, to, to be fair, it's a lot harder Konoe to be... fell ill yeah. the minute she became his consort, and she was fucking Toba on the side. <laughs> like, let, let's be honest, she's still a gold digger in, in that version, you know? Because Konoe was the emperor, but Tobo was reigning as cloistered emperor, and she was fucking Toba and Konoe. But Tobo was her longtime lover. The one that she performed for when she was seven, who took her into the court. So, you know. It's kind of doing a little bit of a power grab there. She's very famous for that in a lot of later literature about that. They go on about how she's, like, always searching for, like, to corrupt men and and gain um, a lot of power in her own right. Sorry there. I drew myself off track with something. Mm. Um, Don't make this video any longer. We are 40 minutes in, my dude. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out where I am here. <laughs> you were looking for a spare note. No, it wasn't a spare oh. I brought it. That was the, 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 the good housewife bit was the okay. spare note, the lady-in-waiting influencing that. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to her abilities here. Hmm. By the way, we're going to see... That was an art. Yes, that was an art. 
we're going to see what well as you can see how much tom Murray yeah is. there's a lot there's um, so fucking much i want to find oh there's class skills there's something i want to find here a specific piece of <sighs> here. sorry Because we actually have some artwork of her in the field. I should have brought this up earlier. I am sorry. We're looking at every piece of Wait, artwork. Wait, go down. Call. Go down. Okay, never mind. I thought I saw green. Is it in a card art? Oh, no, here it is. Oh, yeah. Beautiful young girl. Begging for her life. Should just click the abilities in the tab to the side. I should. There is too much. <laughs> I know a commenter's a gonna say it. This is a good spot to put us here. So, Tawanomai, once she's summoned, she yeah. only has one tail. Okay. Um, over time, she can grow more tails when she's summoned, but that one tail has a, indicates her power level. Okay. We have numbers. Okay, but the problem is these mean nothing to me. You're going to need to give me a servant I know to compare this to. So Gilgamesh, Arjuna, Karna, like these a rank servants? Yeah. Right here at rank A. They have it here. Oh, okay. And Talmo with only one tail is actually extremely weak. Okay. The most she's willing to grow when she's summonable as a servant normally is three tails. Each of these numbers is just timesing itself by nine, isn't it? Yes, it's exponential growth. Yeah. And that is how strong Amaterasu is compared to your average servant. Ah, very, your very, average, very strong. strong servant. Yes. Very strong. To be fair, though, due, due to the age in the Hokusai story, wouldn't, um, was the Nobu have a... Nobu, potentially. Nobu being a gag character, everything's kind Stops of up in the it. air. Stops it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, she does have the old thing. The old thing. <laughs> but, let me see here. So, possibly out of disdain for her previous, like, very power-hungry uh, self, and part of out, and partially because she just wanted to lose the weight that they gave her, she cut her own tails off. Okay. And that is why she's only summonable as one. Okay. It will be important later for these extra tails. Okay. roll through here because yeah even in the abilities we're not seeing the servant skills yet there they are yep okay uh, all right so territory creation divinity yeah if she didn't have divinity i'd be very surprised um with that backstory is it curse arts that's her primary means of fighting or just mm -hmm. curses yeah shapeshift interesting she didn't have this until she this last one until she interacted with a um, with another fox girl in another fate work. Oh, fox's wedding. That's okay. Okay. Of a certain J.K. rival. We'll get there Tanky eventually. Is my oh, I'm so confused. <laughs> Don't worry. This skill is mostly a gag skill. Okay. Okay. All right. So her NP here, ten, or Eightfold Blessings of Amaterasu. Okay. Yeah, that's the Yata no Kagami, probably. Yep. I probably even says here. Uh, that just says Eightfold Blessing. What Yata that no that? Kagami. Yep. Yep. Oh, that's the uh, Takahinatero no Mikoto, according to other descriptions of the Nihon Shoki. I mentioned that. It was taken from Izumo, later enshrined at Kawachi, and it possibly came to be known as the Yata no Kagami, Divine Repository of Amaterasu, and the prototype for the other one. Um, fun fact, apparently this mirror is still enshrined at Kawachi, um, mm. but there was a fire in the shrine like three or four hundred years ago, um, and so we have an impression of what we think the mirror would look like. Like somebody made an impression like hundreds of years ago or some shit, but like no one checked it after the fire because it's considered too valuable and too sacred to open. So it's enshrined there, 
and it might be destroyed by fire, or it might not. We don't know. So this is an actual real-life case of Schrodinger's cat. Yeah, yeah, no, it is Schrodinger's Yata no Kagami. <laughs> the Japanese <laughs> Imperial <laughs> Dynasty's Schrodinger Yata no Kagami. Which is, is really interesting because um, of the three heirlooms I mentioned that were given as gifts to the Japanese Imperial line by Amaterasu... Um, only one of them officially remains in the possession of the royal family, and that is the jewel piece, right? It's just a piece of jade jewel. The mirror is enshrined at Kawachi, and it's obviously Schrodinger's mirror. No clue whether it's survived or not, you know? It also could have been stolen at some point. Nobody knows, because it's never been opened. Um, and then the sword, uh, Kusanagi no Tsurugi, um, was lost in the... 12 or 1300s in a sea battle when it was thrown into the ocean. The Imperial family does have a recreation of it. But the original sword was lost, like, the, for the better part of a century ago or something like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so this mirror, it's got its own abilities, but she uses it often just as a blunt force object because, you know, why not? Yeah, yeah, whack him with the mirror. Um, but when she is using it properly, she can invoke its true name to revitalize herself and others, as well as increase her capacity to inflict curses. And the more tails she possesses, the stronger this mirror gets. Okay. Um, at its maximum power, it's even capable of reviving the dead. Nice. So. Don't suppose you'd let us pull servants out of the dead pool with that. <laughs> No, she would need, like, nine tails. She's not doing that for your dumb asses. <laughs> if I get enough spirit stones. That wasn't a no, boys and girls. So, as you can see here, this is all that NP. Jesus fucking Christ. We're going to go through these chronologically from when they were oh, released. Oh, it's so janky. This is the original extra. We saw this last... Or it was yep, Vladdy's. Vladdy. We saw it with Vladdy. Is that Bedivere? No. Oh. I assume it's one of the round table knights. Yes. Because of the armor. It looks like Artorias. I should have found this one earlier. Here we go. <laughs> this is like Nintendo level. This is for the PSP. Yeah, that, that would explain it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's that's it on that one. Okay. This is just a better version of that one. Yep, no. this is for the PS Vita, I think. Oh, Jesus. But it already Ofuda. looks a million times better. Look, she's got the Ofuda. Yep. Ooh, and Tori Gates. It's like a Biju bomb. People who have seen Naruto will get that reference. Or a spirit energy bomb from, from I think Dragon Ball. she also Ball. used to put another Tamamo. Yeah. <laughs> it's Tamamo versus Tamamo. So here we go, FGO. Okay. Let you see some of her animations. Yeah. Stuff. I don't know, use that mirror, whack someone. Boom, boom. Whack him. Whack him good. <laughs> Turns herself into a little cartwheel chainsaw. I approve. Alright, let's bring up the MP. Yeah. Okay, dancing. Ofuda. It's certainly colorful. We're getting bigger here. Now we're with Extella. Oh. This one we don't need to worry about copyright on. Okay. Ooh, I like the I like the as a fan with the Ofuda sticking out. That was cool. This is all the exact same NP, it's just different animations of it. Yeah. The Ofuda, the mirror, the Tori Gates. This one needs to be used as an attack though. Ah. Biju bomb. With the tail, I can get the, the fucking Biju bomb. 
Okay. This part, we're going to need to black out. So we'll see you when we get back, folks. Okay. So, all right, we're back, folks. <laughs> Fuck the Extella Link uh, uh, copywriting. Is it really that bad? They got us before the video even went up last time we had one. Yeah, but that was a while back. That was like a year and a half after the game was released. Oh, okay. When it came out, apparently you can get your entire channel taken down for that one. <gasps> research later. Okay, never mind. All right, plus play. We do not have time to... Dilly down. We this really don't. Okay. So she's just in everything. Yes. She's a caster, right? We didn't yes. clarify that. Yes, okay. we didn't. She's a caster. Okay. I was like... Ooh, that's, that's, a, that's a chest ratio. Somehow it's worse in 3D. Oh, for the Tori Gates. Yata no Kagami. Hey, I know those two people. Potentially. I know one of those people. I don't know if it's near Colladius or Saber of Red. Because cause there's two, right? Red Saber and Saber of Red. Yeah, I don't. I, we haven't covered either of them yet, so. Then you know him, yeah. Yeah, of course. All right, this is one you have we have not done before on the channel. <gasps> There's Lils in Excella Link. I guess, yeah. Sorry, that's a, put that down on the update video. <laughs> Excella Link will get us copyrighted. Put it down to show me, anyways. It's adorable. That's a little skahawk. Okay, I'm sorry. So play, this play the is Tamamo. this is Extra Record, the remake of the original Extra. So this is like okay. not even released yet. Okay. Oh, wow. That is a lot better. That is ungodly better. Oh, she looks so much better. She doesn't look like you'd scrape your hand on her if you tried to touch her face. Right. <laughs> she doesn't look like some of my figures that have hair so spiky it hurts. That last bit got you, apparently. <laughs> what the fuck? I cannot deal. All right. So, yeah. Tunguska? No. Okay. Swimsuit. Ah, Lancer. Yes. Oh, I approve. Very cute. Very cute. Very horny. Very horny. Even hornier. That's so much as like, look, that is Im speaking as a woman. That is impractical as one bounce. And that is just coming out the bottom. Who's to say she's not okay with that? <laughs> and that wasn't the intention. I want whatever she's eating, though. Yeah, that looks real good. That looks fucking delicious. Better than that monstrosity I got. This is adorable. I like this. Oh, I like that the little uh, lifesaver is hung around her tail. That's really cute. <laughs> so Tomo Lancer here actually has something. Mm. Oh, we'll have to return to those later. We'll come back there after Talmo lands her. So, when summer hits, Talmo dons this swimsuit. Mm -hmm. And um, as Talmo lands her, the swimsuit being part of the sun and bringing her closer to that Amaterasu state makes her far more beastly, far more aggressive in all aspects. Jesus. Fight is more aggressive. Fucking more aggressive. Horny? Get horny. Yeah. Yeah. That is a confirmed part, and I'm not going more into detail on that. <laughs> In this form, um, parts of Amaterasu just start leaking out. Glorious. Abilities-wise, she's pretty much... So let me go over here. We'll just... Oh, I just switched the tabs. Um, mm -hmm. We'll go back here to... Oh, that's the NP. Oh, I guess Probably I just... Probably close that. 
we'll come back to these. They're not that important. So, ability-wise, a lot of these are variations on what she already has, just mm -hmm. updated for summer, and it incorporates more Amaterasu into her. Mm -hmm. um, her NP is called Everlasting Summer Delight, also known as Polygamy Castration Fist. It is an anti-male attack. Mm. I'll let Seki uh, swallow first. <coughs> what? <laughs> so... It's actually supposed to be an anti, like, evil spirit attack meant to ward off evil spirits <coughs> going into that Amaterasu aspect. Is this, like, Meb's chariot thing? No. Okay. Talamo Lancer, and actually Talamo Castor can do this as well, um, has reworked it so that it's now anti-male to kill any bad influences to her master who she is trying to goad into taking on the role of her husband. She's grooming them. Yes. <laughs> I wish I could be more charitable to Tomo here, but I cannot. What the fuck, fate? <laughs> Thing is, so... No, 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 no. We, we did this in order last time. We're doing this in order again. This is Talmo Castor using it. Okay. <laughs> Why? Why is there the sound of photographs? Why? All right, now that's the actual summer form using it. <laughs> Oh, wow. They really animated the physics. Yes. Arcade! Oh, we have an arcade! Do we have an arcade for all of these? No. Okay, thank God. This is our last arcade today, I think. Okay. Apparently, Robin Hood says it's a very painful attack to take. What? I haven't met Robin Hood yet. Nope. Oh, wow. <clears throat> <clears throat> Don't ask me what color was anything in this video. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned it yet. She's a lancer, obviously. Yeah, I mentioned it earlier. I saw it on the page. Those, those umbrellas are deadly. Oh, wow. That was a, certainly an angle. Oh, that was another angle. Oh, that that's another angle. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so did the fact that she held orgies in the palace as Daji shine through here or what? A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> All right. So we'll come back to that. Jesus fucking Christ. Let's go back to Tomo here because I missed this and it's kind of not that important. But she had, she does technically have two more forms here. The Mythological Mystic Code of the Sun and uh, Mooncrux. Hmm. Uh, this is a form that allows her to actually grow more than her three tails. Hmm. She only does this temporarily and pretty much rips them off as soon as they're all grown in. Okay. Um, and this is Mooncrux. This is very specifically tied to the uh, MacGuffin of the video game this is in called the Regalia. Mm -hmm. um, it basically just increases her physical combat abilities to actually be able to keep up with someone like, say, Altera or Nero. Okay. All right. I can't want to close out of that yet, but we can go ahead and move on now. So, you've seen Tomo there. 
There are eight more of these fuckers. Is this because nine tails? Yep. The, all those tails she cut off each became individual servants known as the Tomomo Nine. Wait, 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 Gucci? Yes. Well, now I want to know which one is Gucci. We'll go over these. <laughs> I don't think I could identify any of these other than Mai's right there. What about Cat? I act, well, we do have a design for Cat. I don't know which one it would be on most. Okay. These. This is like the proto designs okay. prior to Cat being made a design. Okay, because I know Tamamo Cat exists. Yes. So. Okay. I really want to know Tamamo Gucci though. <laughs> these are all technically alter egos of Tamamo. You remember alter egos from way back in the Liz video? Yeah. Yeah. Like, just separate aspects of it. Yeah. Uh, they don't necessarily have to be summoned into the alter ego class, but they function under the same principles. Okay. There's Tomo no Mai, the original good wife. Yep, one in blue. There's Tomo Cat, who we will come back to. Okay. There's Tomo Vich, the beautiful secretary. Okay. There's Tomo Gucci, the one who values high class goods. <laughs> There's Tomo Delmo, the one that loves decorating her home. Okay. There's Tomo no Hime, the ideal princess. Okay. There's Tomo no Aria, the mysterious one. Okay. And then there's two more Tomos that have remained unnamed, and I have no idea what they are. Jesus fucking Christ. Why so many, Tamamo? One for each tail. I mean, I get that, but Jesus. Look, all those tails give so much extra weight, you gotta shave those off. <laughs> Just like losing pounds. Easy way to lose pounds as a servant. Julius Caesar will tell you firsthand it's hard to do that. Okay, the fastest way to lose the pounds that Julius Caesar has is to just cut them off. <laughs> and she did. <laughs> did she? Yeah, she just, remember I said she just cut her tails off. Oh, I thought you meant to Caesar. I thought you meant she murdered Caesar. Unfortunately, I think Caesar would just die if you cut okay. off his gut. Okay. I mean, valid. So, cat. Yeah. Oh, those are big. Why big. is it fucking Ugg boots? Oh, my God. I kind of hate it. <laughs> I kind of hate it. <laughs> A little bit. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> em emphatically. That's acceptable. <laughs> oh, just, that those are the eyes of someone who has recently been to the bathroom with white powder somebody dangled catnip in front of that kitty for too long sissa gets those eyes sprites. <laughs> yep don't like that don't like that one oh. that's better oh that's a costume Oh, it's like, yeah, the, the roller diner girl. I approve. <laughs> so, yeah. That's... Also, whatever she's carrying looks, once again, so fucking good. <laughs> so, Talmo Cat here. Oh, boy. This is so far the only member of the Talmo Nine we have any substantial information on. Okay. And I and... know she's a berserker. Yes. This is the wild beast aspect of Talmo. Okay. Um, she's weird in that she devotes herself wholly and fully uh, to her master... More directly as if she were their wife. Tomo no Mai just wants their master to be, or her master to be their, or her husband. Okay. She wants to be their wife. Okay. There's a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, while she's reasonably intelligent, um, the one thing she's lacking is a reasonable amounts of reason. Okay. Shaking the camera. I guess just as a quick little fun fact here, Tomo no Mai, like the full Tomo no Mai, along with a bunch of other servants, trained under Benny Enma for domestic uh, to learn domestic like skills, like cooking and cleaning. Oh, during that uh that that hell event. Pre the hell event, like, this is pre FGO, oh, pre history okay. here. Okay. Tomo no Mai wasn't very good at it. Tomo Cat, however, kept with it and became actually good at it. I feel like we might have mentioned that in the Benny Enma, Benny Enma video. Yeah. Yeah. That has earned Tomo Cat a place in the kitchen alongside Emia, the other resident housewife. Aww. I always forget Emmy is such a housewife. I mean, look, I love the way he cleaned that entire mansion. He did. He really did. Very well and very quietly and very fast. <laughs> Combat wise. looked hot doing it. Is just not important, but she can use the cursed arts that Tomo can still. And, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and scroll down here in case you want to take a look at that. But 
Mm-hmm. Take a look at her skills in detail. Oh, yeah, it's really just... It's Okay. Simple. Yeah. So, her NP here, Opulence of Sunlight and Catnip. <laughs> oh, boy, do I get that. Um, again, not much here. It's mimicking a game, a torture game where a tiger chases people in the woods. So, back to that Talmo no Mai as Daji learning huh. new tortured methods. Look, look, look. I'm not saying that I value tigers more than I value some people in this world. But I'm not not saying that I don't value tigers more than some humans in this world. <laughs> but one other thing that Talmo brings here is Talmo cat being part of Talmo. Remember that? You know how the stone of uh, death, the stone that Talmo yeah, came out of? Yeah, It said that it like brought about misfortune and sickness to those that came yeah. near it. Uh, yeah, she, you bring about, mis- the person the tiger's chasing also tends to face some bad fortune. <laughs> Jesus. Afterwards, Cat takes a nice long cat nap to recover her strength. I feel that, honestly. We just have FGO here. Thank God. <laughs> Ooh, fire tail. So, laser beam. <laughs> So I need to find a version of that fireball. Fireball? Probably skip ahead to the NP now. Oh no, I'm trying to find a specific version of this. Why? Oh. Oh, more ice. That was actually in the D&D sheet that I gave you. Oh, Jesus, I didn't look. Fucking Omurice. I could go for an Omurice right now. <gasps> Nickel! Daisy the cute Nickel! You're such a cute kitty. And that is Tomo Cat. Okay. You need to start closing some of these tabs, my dude. I need to keep a few of these open, though. Oh. Basically, all things need to stay open. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'll close all my Tara so we're not coming back to her anytime soon. No. Time. Probably get rid of the Wikipedias. Uh, I need to pull up, because it's time for... Tunguska? Tunguska. Okay. All right. So, the Tunguska event was a... Tw- approximately 12 ton mega uh 12 megaton explosion near the uh Podkamanaya Tunguska River in Yenisaisk uh governorate uh now known as uh Krasnoyarsk Krai in Russia on June 30th 1908 um, the impact flattened about 80 million trees over 2150 square kilometers in Siberia with some reports claiming that there were deaths involved um a lot of people think it's a meteor airburst, uh, the atmospheric explosion of an asteroid about 50 to 60 meters, 160 to 200 feet in size, um, uh, that it happened in the atmosphere of, of Earth, right? So technically still an impact event, even though there was no confirmed impact crater, um, and it may have disintegrated a significant uh, distance above the Earth's surface. So this is the largest impact in recorded history. That does not mean that this is the largest um, asteroid to ever impact Earth, but it is the largest. It is the largest one since we have had written records of such events. Um, the impact was registered as far away as uh, measuring devices in Washington D.C. and California, um, and there have been many expeditions to the area to investigate. In fact, there have been over one thousand papers published on it in Russia over the years since then. So there's a couple different versions of this. There's the Earth Impactor model, where in uh, a meteoroid entered Earth's uh, atmosphere uh, constantly, and so the 15 megaton impact would have been equal to the Castle, Br- Castle Bravo 1954 uh, nuclear testing. Um, you know, if you know, for those of you who know about the nuclear testing, a fun fact: it's still only a third of the yield of the 1961 Tsar bomba testing, which says something about nuclear weapon testing that I am not comfortable with. Um, A 2019 paper actually suggests that it may have been a 20 to 30 megaton impact, not a 12 megaton impact. Um, And recent estimates place comparable yields uh, only about once in a millennia. So even though we have um, 
kind of meteoroids entering Earth's atmosphere constantly, they rarely impact like this. So there's the Glancing Impact Hypothesis 2022, uh, model match of an asteroid about 200 meters traveling at 11.2 kilometers per second. That would match the impact. Uh, the blast pattern was butterfly shaped, which means that the uh, asteroid likely approached an angle of about 30 degrees. Uh, coming from about 115 degrees north and exploded midair. However, there is debate. It may not have been an asteroid. It may have also been a comet. In 1930, the idea was proposed that it was instead a comet, which is made of like dust violets, like water, ice, and frozen gases. And that would have explained there being no impact crater and no, um, no like meteor left behind because it would have uh, vaporized in the atmosphere. In 1978, an astronomer named Kresek suggested that it was a fragment of comet Enke, um, in 1983, Zonik uh, Sekanina published a paper rejecting the comet hypothesis, although, you know, in 2001, Farinella Fershini et al. concluded with about an 83% certainty that it was an asteroid from the asteroid belt. 83%? It's pretty good, but honestly, the comet hypothesis has not really been disproven. Um, so in 2008, there were some 3D modeling that supported the comet hypothesis, and some scientists have believed that Lake Checo in this uh, nearby may have been an impact crater, but the studies on the age of the lake vary from about 800 years old to like actually fitting the time frame. So maybe, maybe not. We still don't know if it was a comet or an asteroid because we have no meteorite evidence, right? And if it was a comet, we wouldn't have any. But what would create this pattern and that sort of thing? Um, so, and some scientists think that geophysical causes could explain it, like um, eruptions under the Earth's crust shifting and that sort of thing. Uh, but basically, it was a giant fuck-off blast, not dissimilar to the 2012 Chelyabinsk impact, but much bigger. All right, so is that our good, uh, <laughs> our final notes for the day? Uh, yes. Okay, so I've got another narrative here, and this time I'm not pulling you over to the design. Oh boy. So, the impact of the meteor killed unimaginable amounts of animals. Wouldn't you say that? Yeah, 80 million trees. Fun fact, the trees were actually, a lot of them were still standing upright, but they were all stripped of branches as if they'd been vaporized. Hmm. Imagine what that would do to a mammal. Well, that many animals, they get a lot of grief, a lot of fear. And do you remember what happened with all the dead kids in Jack the Ripper? Did all these dead animals create a fucking it spirit of suffering? It created a nature spirit. Oh. This nature spirit would be so immense. And I just made a little thing. Jesus. It would grow to encompass not only the animals that died in the blast, but all the animals in the nearby area that were suffering at the hands of, like, the expansion of human civilization as well. Okay. Basically, it just became one giant lump of animal suffering. Okay. It was notable enough for the counterforce to summon a servant, uh, Dobrynya, or Dobrynya Nikitich. Nikitich? Yes. Nikitich. And they observed, they got to observe. We'll cover that servant eventually, but for today, it doesn't matter too much. Yeah, we're not covering them now. That servant ended up naming the uh, that spirit. Okay. And the spirit's name became Yaskaya. Okay. How do you spell that? Y-A-S-K-A-Y-A. I don't know. Let me see. Sorry. I actually don't have a good way of showing it. Okay. I'll see it on the page, I'm sure. Maybe. When you take me to it. Why wouldn't I? We'll get there. So that spirit wasn't quite cognizant at the time. Okay. And over time, the name eventually ended up like, their memory of that name just morphed to become Koyanskaya. You aren't going to find that in your notes. Okay. Normally she would have just faded over time like most nature spirits born of suffering. And she normally wouldn't even be a servant. Like, you normally would not have a Tunguska uh, event servant. Mm -hmm. Because unlike something like Jack the Ripper, we don't prescribe the Tunguska event any deeds that we give a human. Technically, some people thought it was aliens. Not enough people. <laughs> not enough people. However, 
in the year of our Lord 2017. <laughs> I was expecting 2022 for some reason. Uh, technically, it was 2019 if we're talking in the NA server. <laughs> you remember how Calf Pelug uh, relinquished his seat as Beast 4? Oh, did she become Beast 4? She took note of that. Oh. And suddenly she became a spirit with a goal. Oh, to become a beast. Technically, I could have included her in Kath Pelug's video. Oh. But we still needed to do Tomomo. So it was just whichever came first, Kath Pelug or Tomomo. And it just happened to be Kath, but Tomomo. Yes. So having gained a goal and a purpose and more consciousness, she realized, or not realized, she, she picked a saint graph that she thought was similar to her in nature and grabbed Tomo no Mai's Saint Graph. Okay. And took on one of the Tomo Nine's name, becoming Tomo Vich Koyanskaya. Okay. I really want to see how these are spelled. We'll get there. We'll, we'll pull that up in a second. Her physical appearance are apparently close enough to Tomo when she was dodgy, for um some for you know no i'll just say for someone to have confused her with dodgy okay hokusai no okay and so now with a body and with a purpose she went out into the world and created a company called the the nine fox foundation and its okay. subsidiary the tomo heavy industries they produced military equipment and mercenary services for her, and that made her extraordinarily rich. Okay. Her intention was to become a beast of humanity and take foe's abandoned seat. Uh, this brought her to the attention of two different parties. Okay. The first was an intentional party that she was going after, and she would use her abilities and money to infiltrate the mage world, uh, becoming uh, someone under the employ of the music family. Okay. They're unimportant. Okay. The second was being a beast of increased power. She caught the attention of Beast 7, who we will not be covering today. Damn. Because I don't know enough about Beast 7 yet. Damn. Um, but Beast 7 ended up bringing in Tomo uh, Vichkoyanskaya into its plan which spiraled out of control into uh, the current arc of FGO, the Cosmos of the Lost Belt. Okay. So, oh, sorry. Were you talking about the desk shaking there? Yes. She, in, in, now she has, like, four different forms. Okay. In one last note, she actually has an idol. that She, she idolizes one person amongst the humans. Who? Hugh Hefner. <laughs> oh, there were better choices. <laughs> oh, there were better choices. So let me introduce you to Koyanskaya. Koyanskaya. Let me see if I can find, because I believe, so yes, this is her, this is one design. She actually has a design for every chapter she appears in. I love all of them. <gasps> oh, ooh. Ooh, I like those two. Yeah. Well, oh, and this is a sign. <laughs> that translates like, take me to the imaginary number seat or something like that. <laughs> it was not her highest moment. Okay, I like this. I like this design a lot. We'll move to those guys in a second. I'm a fan. Kayanskaya. So, ability-wise, she becomes a juvenile beast. Okay. Uh, this is what it looks like down here. <sighs> okay. So this is a little bit of a hard interpretation of it because it's not separate things here. Normally in the fight, this is so this is its sprite. Normally it's a like complete blank black background in the fight. Okay. Because what she's doing as a beast here is she's corrupting the area around her and spreading out basically smoke so you can't actually see her. If you were to take a look at this and we will get a good look at what this actually looks like later, she looks more like a five tailed fox. Okay. Because her plan to become a beast is to grow tails like Talma would have been. I mean, I can, Sort of mimic the Amaterasu thing. I can already kind of see the fox. Yeah. Ish. And there's five splits, so. Yep. You know, five tails. 
that said, that's also why she's unable to become a beast, is because she's mimicking Palmo, and her inability to actually reach that level of power okay. means that she's never going to be as beastly as Amaterasu and Dodgy. Okay. So eventually she goes a slightly different route and forces herself to become a beast, becoming this abomination. What the fuck? I don't... That makes no sense. So I can explain this, actually. So remember how all the Lost Belts are bastardizations of the human history? Yeah. Every time she would go to a fuck Lost Belt... What is this? The Full Metal Alchemist dog girl? Kind of. Every, so, her ability that she has is to... Because she has that connection with the animals. Elbow off the desk if you're gesturing. Because she has that connection to the animals. Yeah. Is it just a little bit of everything that died there? Every time she'd go to a Lost Belt, to create one of her tails, she'd pick a particularly powerful, large, demonic beast and take it into herself as one of her tails. Well, I see antlers. I see a bear claw. Yep. I see... I'm... That eventually just became this because she had to force herself to become a beast without having to mimic the Ptolemo, uh sort okay. of disposition. Okay. We're going to move away from that because I could see your... <laughs> it's just upsetting. A little bit. And yeah, we have some skills here. Okay. We'll come back to this, the Tunguska 9 Drive. That better have a golf club. <laughs> no, it does not. Damn. So... Moving over here, eventually she's beaten and she splits into two forms, Clan Sky of Light and Clan Sky of Darkness. They okay. both actually have completely different costumes. Okay. Uh, you know what? Why am I doing this when we have? <sighs> we'll just scroll through these here. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. Very cute. Gun. Yes. Yes. Gun. Yes. A lot Many of Many guns. guns. Unlimited gun works. <laughs> You're not wrong. And then this is Queen Sky of Darkness. Okay. Taking a little bit more after what her original uh, oh, okay. designs were. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Okay. Tigger. There was Tigger. Yeah, I like that. I do. And the little meteor in the... Yeah, so this yeah. is a little closer to what her Beast 4L design was. Yeah. Just cleaned up a lot. Yeah. But without the extra shit. Makes sense. So, as far as what these guys can do, or these, uh, people. <laughs> so, Clan Sky, uh, the first half, the light here, is a half that appreciates humanity, viewing them as cute pets. I could be a pet for her. And she decides she's going to take on a role of being a, a goddess of modern-day weaponry. I could be a pet for her pat me on my head anytime as far as what she does she makes guns okay yeah no that sounds aptitude for slaughter innovator bunny <laughs> i like that name she's actually like her favorite thing to do is make weapons for humans to use to destroy each other nice and she's also a capitalist icon as she is still trying to use nff services to lead the world nice her NP here is called the Is Tula 7 Drive. You want to sc scroll down? No, there's not much more to scroll down. That's just uh, where it's I just wanted to see it. Yeah. You didn't have it scrolled down far enough for oh. me to see it. It was like cut off here. So, Is Tula 7 Drive. Okay. Um, she built a mech based on the Izumo Grand Shrine in order to um, not an appreciation of it because she uh, wanted to parody it and mock it. Okay. And then she fires ballistic missiles from it at her enemies. Valid. I like that it's pink. But you knew I would. Pink camo. Tamamotag. You gonna show me the MP? Hmm? That was the MP. Oh, sorry. Do you want to see some of the animations here? No, 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 no. Sorry. I just didn't realize it was the MP because I'm an idiot. That was a little bit well animated to be the regular attacks. 
luck. <laughs> so Koyanskaya of Darkness here is actually a worse person than she was when she tried to become a beast. Mm, presumably the of darkness name. Yep. Her hope is to lead animals to destroy humanity. Okay. This is closer to how she was with her Tunguska event, because basically she separated off from any character development she had prior to, the, to her, uh, uh, her uh, defeat. Okay. She has the ability to force um, pretty much any monster under her control and use them as weapons to kill humans. And she can also recreate some of Tomo's crimes, being able to force men into being beasts that'll kill each other. Dominator Fox. Yes. Reminds me of Joe. Her NP is called Tunguska 9 Drive, so there is that again. Yep. We'll click into it here, because this is where you get to see the, uh, the okay. her fox beast form. Okay, so it looks just like I thought it would. Yeah. Yeah. Um... She ba and th with this, she turns herself basically into a recreation of the meteor that caused the Tunguska event and destroys everything in the area. It doesn't get much more simple than that. Yeah. There's the meteor. Big fox boy. Go! Unlike the Tunguska event, that has an impact crater. Yes. So, yeah, that would be Talmo and then the person who ripped off Talmo's style. Okay. Oh, I did not mean to get that. Let's go into CEs. Oh, God, we're going to have so many. Talmo is a very popular Is this going to be like Kath Plug? Where we had like a hundred? You know, I'm actually not sure. Oh, oh, thank God. That's not bad at all. Oh, thank God. We can actually click into these. Yeah. Just... We don't have to pick in. Oop. Did I just open where? Did it's I open there. Where? Okay. Yeah. Well, you you might want to close some tabs so that we can actually. I'll close the NPs. And I'll close the wikis. We don't need to come back yeah. to these for a bitch. Uh, what do I have here? That's Lancer. That's one of the card arts. Okay. I wasn't sure where I left off at. <laughs> Hell's Kitchen. Hell's Kitchen. Okay. Got the Daredevil CE. Alright. So, Tamamo's fan club! This is her Bond CE. Aw, that's cute. It's a dream manual to prepare dreaming wives to one day live in a dream house with a dreamy husband. The manual includes many tips and how-tos that can turn anyone into an ideal wife. I see, I see. Only ask your husband to spoil you when he has flea time. If your husband looks sad, please spoil him instead. Of course I already know this. Tamamo totally gets this sort of thing. Heart. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently the book doesn't write about how to get the dreamy husband. <laughs> I appreciate that. I, f I feel it, Tamamo. Mikoto bride training. Okay. This is all for my master willingness to do any... I feel like Tamamo has, like, maybe some, like, distorted views on, like, a proper relationship. Maybe. <laughs> Valentine's. Heart. There's so many hearts. There's like actual heart emojis. What the fuck? Hold on. Okay. Come on. Go away. That's right. Keep going. Keep going. Hi, Sissa. Did you want to come in? That's mean. Fox's Night Dream. Okay. You want to scroll down? Oh, the cry of the matchmaker fox. The wedding party marches forth. I approve. A thousand Tory gates on her way. These are very... The faithful dog who waits. I don't know who the character on the right is, but... I might. 
shield bearers and head hunting warriors are no match for us. This is how we show our devotion. Ugh. Jesus, another heart emoji. <sighs> Fate, Extella. See Altera there in the background. Yep. Tolmo. One of like the savers. Seraph. Regalia. Okay. Nero's rival and the bearer of the other symbol of kingship. She creates the entertainment hall. Millennium. Jesus, fuck it. Millennia Heian he Kyoto and Spencer Day gathering servants and NPCs. Hmm? Oppressive government? Hellish taxes and abuse? Yes, I'm sure that's true. That's how I'm running the place after all. I forgot to mention, Tomo gets to rule like an entire like, piece of the moon in one of the games. Glorious. And this is Tomo's there. Yeah. Other servants here. I don't think you know any of them. Probably not. It's very it's Gundam. Just... Prize uh, explanation of the game. There. Yeah. Heroic spirit traveling outfit. Anniversary. Nice. The, the, the anniversary arts always look good. Hell's Kitchen. Okay, so there's Benny Enma there. <laughs> uh, can I click into this in full? Let me get yes. a good look here, see what I can identify. There's Talmo. Yes. You don't know that one. Okay. You don't know that one? Okay. Yeah, no, you don't know that one. Okay. 10 out of 10. Uh, this actually might have some spoilers. No, it's fine. Nope. Oh, you must first learn to think like the prey that is about to be part of you. If you were to learn to take it to life, you must first be willing to risk <laughs> yours for this cooking class. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. That feels very Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> we talked about this with Betty Enma. Yes. Very Gordon Ramsay. I approve. Empty garden. There's some servants in the background, but you can barely see them. Aw, let's get away for fun. Very cute. This is the least problematic one so far. All right. <sighs> Hi. So, Tomo Lancer, the most problematic of the Tomos, let me tell you. I'll yeah. tell you what happens here off screen. This might get us, like, actively reported. Oh. Okay. Oh, thank God. All right, Sunset Beach. Bonk. Summer is over, vacation is over. All those memories just feel empty. I wish upon the sun. Please stop sinking over the horizon. Just a few minutes more. Just kidding. Now's not the time for sad poems like that. Even if summer is ending, Tamamo Chan's summer isn't over until the sun finishes setting. I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> the summer beast is an immortal animal, so don't worry. <sighs> Next year's summer also promises sparkling days. Chocolate driver. Oof. A summer cocktail of melted chocolates. It said that it is ten times the sugar and elasticity of normal coffee and milk. Uh, uh. Okay. I guess I do have to bring it up here and you can cut this out if is you she, want. Is she... I don't think you need to. I think I got it. You got it then. You I got, got it. it. I'll tell you right now, this is only in the Japanese version. Okay. In the English version, they kind of censor that a lot. Actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This okay. This might have a difference here. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little different. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you got it. You're getting that it. there. I got it. We don't We don't need to go into that. that. No. Yeah. No, no, no. No, no, no. Mm. See why I call her the most problematic of the Tomos? Kitten. Oh. Tomo Cat. The objectively, the Tomo that's objectively the best person. Apron with tigers on it. A cat thinks, therefore a cat is. What is a meal? It is one to make themselves, or to be made by others, to give oneself, or to be given by others. No cat has reached this truth yet. Only the one who mastered the culinary art gets to wear this pink robe. The cat mage, Merlin says, whoever wears this apron will make an ideal wife and will also be able to govern Chaldea. I thought about a story. What do you think? Speaking of... Oh! I 
I want the third one, but I don't want you to pick her up because she's not going to like that. I think she wants out. She does, but we can't let her out until I'm watching the kittens, so she's going to suffer for a couple of minutes while we finish. Don't hiss at the babies! Alright, hold on. You want me to... Boo, boo, boo. Come on, darling. First of all, we say hi to our viewers. <laughs> this is my beast of calamity. <laughs> Your calf plug. This is my cute. This is my calf plug. All right, move it, kitten. It's okay. our own tamamo cat. <laughs> so made in Halloween. Yes, many Halloween treats. Undead kitty candy. <laughs> <laughs> it feels very appropriate for right now. Oh, that's cute. Wonderful life. It's like a pin. Oh, Valentine's chocolate. Nice. I love you so much, Master. At least there's not a fucking heart. <sighs> I know one of the people there. Tom was somewhere in the back. Oh, I think I see regular Tom. I think that's Tom over there. Caldea kitchen truck. Unlimited burger <laughs> works! <laughs> <laughs> this time around, the truck heads out to fill hungry stomachs in New York. Enjoy a piping hot burger. Wait a minute. There's Emia. Are these just all the kitchen... Those are all the kitchen servants. There's Emia. I don't know any of these except for Emia and Tamamo Cat. Unless that's Benny Enma in the back, but I don't think so. No, it's not. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't know these. Yeah, I don't know them. <laughs> all right. These ones probably don't have more than one or two. Because they're new? Yep. Nice. This was released l not this July, but the previous July. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> All right, so. They don't have a choice, Nick. Not some are. Oh! Oh yeah, that's that's some art. Yep. That just looks like a. Oh yeah. Oh, that's cute. Okay, card arts. Who do you know in here? I not a lot. Nick Nack, Nick Nack, look at the length of this video. Go to the card arts. <laughs> Open them. <laughs> That is a big fucking bow. East Coast Edition. The NFF Services. It is an entrepreneurship. She has respect for a certain human. Only one. The one who fought against racism while making liberal women. Um. That looked like it was going in a wholesome direction. Yeah! Yeah, it did. Suddenly Playboy. It did. Pistol. It's a pink gun. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a pink chocolate gun. Jesus. I love it. I love it. Oh, wow. Okay. Is that Meb? Oh, no. Is I don't know Mave? who that is now. I'm sorry. No, it's not Maeve. You will see them eventually. <sighs> Yaskaya. This is the name. Yaskaya. Yep. Uh, actually, it spoils the name in there. Oh, so. I didn't see the other name. I so just yeah, saw we'll, Yaskaya. We'll go ahead and move on from this okay. one. Okay. Darkness. Darkness, darkness, darkness. Darkness. Dun, dun, dun. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, nothing there. Yeah, this Only is like two. from this last New Year. <laughs> Ambition of Koyanskaya, Eurasia edition. <laughs> the last one was East Coast. This one is Eurasia. 
Yeah, that, that'd that be why. It'd be absurd if the species declined for reaching its limit. To prevent that, I'll purchase everything bad about you. The anger, jealousy, grudges, and resentment. You're not allowed to go extinct on my watch. All you need to do is keep demanding the products I offer. Colonialism. Imperialism. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. NFF extra. Oh, lipstick. Valentine's chocolate shaped like lipstick. Cool. Doesn't seem very practical, but cool. So yeah, that would be Tomo plus Kalinskaya. <laughs> That's a fucking behemoth of a servant. Yep. Mm. What'd you think of that? That hour 40 minute now on our clock? I think that there were some problematic elements of it. So Tom will answer. <laughs> yes. Tom on answer. Valentine's Day. <laughs> um, it was very horny. Um, I expected it would be, but it was very horny. Um, it was kind of that horny where it's like too horny to be horny. So like it's horny, but like not horny. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. I think it, it was just... A lot. A little bit like Velber, you know? There's just a lot going on. Yeah. Oof. At least unlike Velber, you got a generally pretty Oof. accurate portrayal That's of Tomo Namai. That's true. Right it... down to the, uh, the, the the orgies and the debauchery. But did I really need that? <laughs> I mean, if you can't have Tomo at her orgy, you can't have Julius Caesar at his general. You know what? I'd make that trade. <laughs> I would. I would make that trade. Yeah. Well, do, do you have a hint for the next servant? To be continued. Um. Well, yeah. Yeah. To be continued. Very much so. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. <laughs>